Hi. Welcome back. You're at Ground Zero Salem with Pat. My token intro. Real imaginative. <laughs> hey, if it ain't broke, you know? We're listening to For Victory by Bolt Thrower. So yeah, I've been on a Bolt Thrower kick lately. One of my favorite death metal bands. I talked about them extensively a few updates back. Got some got some records by them. Little little crop of records by them. I've had this tape for a while. Revisited this last night. It's been a, been a minute since I've listened to For Victory. And it's a great one. Just straight plowing shit. Good death metal from Britain. You know the story. So, <sighs> crack open a cold one here. My favorite seltzer. Polar orange vanilla. Oh. <sighs> Wetting the whistle to talk at you. Uh, got a bunch of 2019 releases. Some very recent stuff. Picked up a few at the mall. Heard some good things. Went into it mostly blind. Was pleasantly surprised. Plus a bunch of mail order stuff. Hardcore, death metal, a little bit of punk. That's about it. So let's talk about it. Got the new Exhumed here. Horror. Uh, Exhumed is a band I haven't really followed in the past decade and a half. Loved the first couple of releases. You know, they captured that early carcass sound, kind of made it their own. You know the rest. And uh, then they went on to kind of change their sound a little bit from what I'm told, from what I've read. Uh, I guess recently more of a melodic kind of direction. Melodic death metal woven in with their sound. Uh, don't quote me on that directly because I haven't delved into those albums. I probably will at some point. But this, I guess, is a pretty good return to form. Lots of short songs, lots of fast songs. A few songs clocking in un under a minute. Going back to kind of a grind influence. I hear lots of repulsion all over it, which is one of their staple influences, I'm sure, but they're going back to it really well on this. You got those gurgly vocals trading off with the shrieking, which has been a staple of their sound for a long time. Um, very catchy, fun record. It's like 15 songs in 20-some minutes, I believe. Right up my alley. Um, I knew that I was going to buy this because a friend of mine online said he was disappointed that they went back to a more basic songwriting style and had short songs. My reply on the old FB was awesome. Sounds like something I'd like, and I do. It's uh, it's a good one. I think it might benefit from a dirtier kind of recording quality, not that super clean kind of relapse thing. Not super duper clinical clean, but uh, a, a more present bass tone, I feel like, would benefit the record. But that's a, a small quibble with it. It's really fucking great. Kind of gory death metal grind shit that they're known for. Kind of a return to form. So, awesome. Uh, next up, Gate Creeper with Deserted. Uh, was kind of on the fence about this band for a while. You know, they exist in that sort of uh, decibel relapse sort of universe. They tour with a lot of hardcore bands and that kind of thing. Um, I'm a big hardcore fan. I'm not mad at that at all. But it seemed to me like kind of mid-paced, stompy, basic death metal that appealed to a lot of that kind of crossover crowd. Um, wasn't sure if it was for me. I spun the first one on streaming a couple of years ago, whenever it came out, uh, I'm trying to remember the name, I think it's Sonoran Deprivation is the name of it, I'll correct myself with a caption if I'm totally wrong, just going off my faulty memory here, but I really like this, um, I read an interview in the New Decibel with uh, the members of the band talking about the direction that they're going for, they use the term stadium death metal, which might be triggering for some people, there's a lot of mention of uh, the Columbia earache stuff and how that was catchy and there are great songs and that kind of thing i'm not really hearing like a ton of heartwork or wolverine blues with this it's, it seems more like the style they had sort of begun with which is riffy kind of bolt thrower stuff with an entombed guitar tone maybe some obituary slower riffs that kind of thing but with this they've kind of expanded on some eerie melodic passages that i like a lot there's um a fair amount of maybe some doom thrown in uh doom metal kind of of the traditional variety here and there and some kind of peaceful stuff uh, woven into it kind of lightly influencing it that really brings out some some great memorable song structures I think I think this is a fun record there's songs that will stick with you you want to listen to again you'll know what part is coming up after the first couple of listens there's some great crushing riffs so I, I totally back this I like it a lot um, fun to listen to death metal. Um, delving into the underground a little bit further, this is a compilation of 
a few demos and a few new studio tracks by this Connecticut band, Vomit Forth. This is Northeastern Deprivation. Uh, this is fucking great. Reminds me a lot of the first time I heard the first Suffocation EP, Human Waste, the first time I discovered the first couple of uh, EPs or demos by Internal Bleeding. It's got a certain kind of slamming quality, but it's not gratuitous. There's a lot of open-y kind of crushing breakdowns, but it's all very brief and just peppered in with all this kind of violent blasting. It's definitely very Northeastern. It's got that strong kind of New York death metal vibe to it. Violent as fuck, really, really fun to listen to. Lots of kind of climbing riffs, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to hear more by these guys. This came out on Maggot Stomp, uh, a label that is new to me. I've heard a lot of hype, a lot of discussion about the stuff that they put out and the quality of their output. They're definitely going for a thing. Um, lots of really scummy, very brutal, heavy, and short and to the point kind of death metal. So I'm going to pick up more. I've got a few other releases by them. The Fluids full length. Um, sonically, if you are a fan of Mortician, this should be up your alley with that really thick, fuzzy, fuzzed out kind of bass tone. Very crushing. Uh, some noise woven in and some really disturbing sound clips kind of introing the songs. Um, very gory. Lots of themes of murder. I mean, it kind of follows a narrative with the song listing on the back there. Caught, shot, chopped, wrapped. Hauled, dumped, displayed, doused, seared, scattered. Um, it causes a very uneasy feeling for me, which is impressive, you know, to still be a little freaked out by how gross a death metal record is. I don't remember where these guys are from in the United States, so smart me up to that. They are a U.S. band as far as I know. I also got, excuse me, The seven inch by a braided another band of, along the same lines uh, very short to the point six songs on a seven inch death metal um, very very distorted uh, kind of in the red sort of guitar tone on it deep brutal vocals um, this brings back to the, the glory days of seraphic decay to me just these great death metal eps this band is fucking great um, again u.s band not sure where they're from but worth checking out for sure. Seven Inches are still available. Um, Maggot Stomp is a small kind of boutique label where a lot of their material is sold out already. There's some other very noteworthy bands on the label. So if you're into the scummy, quick and to the point, fucking scary, brutal death metal, check out that label. Um, Syracuse band, Kalki. Elements of sludge and doom as well as power violence and grind on this there's they're a four-piece band extremely heavy stuff very political songs like shithole countries fake news you get the idea where they're going with that sort of thing um three of the members i know very well have been veterans of the syracuse scene for some time i was e even in a band briefly with the guitarist craig it's a hell of a guy one of the funniest people i know I'm very proud to see them putting out such a quality record. This came out on Cult of Nine, my friend's label, which I'll leave a link for again. They have material up on streaming, Bandcamp. This EP was really cheap, professionally done CDR right there. It's like seven bucks postpaid. So you can't go wrong with this. It's very, very good, like grind with touches of some epic, almost sludge riffs that terminate quickly, go into blasting. Very kind of tight um, snare sound that's almost pingy. It's got that sort of like tightened up kind of power violence drum sound on it. Um, the only thing I could really compare it to is maybe spaz a little bit with some sludge in it, but that's very far off from really what they sound like. So words are failing me, but it's a fucking fantastic little EP, so check it out. Um, very recent quick visit to Syracuse, sadly for a funeral. Um, R.I.P. Aunt Cheryl. You were one of the best, you were a good one. So I was home, did a quick little record shopping trip there. I picked up this Amel and the Sniffers full length, self-titled, came out this year. Amel and the Sniffers, Australian punk band that has a very strong rock and roll kind of thing. Very garagey recording quality with a lot of blown out sort of aspects to it. Definitely dialed into the red. Um, 
lots of different sort of influences going into it, I feel like. There's a couple of really strong nods to glam rock, 70s glam rock, a lot of Australian stuff that it's reminding me of. Um, their forebearers, like the uh, the colored balls and rose tattoo and early ACDC, but sped up. There's parts of this that get so intense, especially the song Gacked on Anger, that are almost kind of like hardcore punk. Uh, they do a bit of this and a bit of that, really. And there's some almost like pop sensibility kind of tracks on here. Um, Got You is a good one. It just rips all the way through. It's just a really, really good fucking punk record. And I love it. I got the new Crip Sermon, finally, after hearing praises for it left and right in the past months. <sighs> the Ruins of Fading Light. So I didn't really like the first one by this band either. I bought it when it came out. I love the logo and the aesthetic and the art and everything, and I love good Epic Doom. Something about it just fell flat for me, but not this second one, not this sophomore release. I'll go back and check out the first one again. I have it on tape. But um, just epic songs, uh, so well written. You'll get the, the uh, chorus of Key of Solomon stuck in your head for days. I guarantee it. The vocalist is sort of a Robert Lowe from Solitude Aeternus kind of thing going on. Doesn't quite have the range that that guy has or like Messiah has, but it's sort of in that general realm. Um, and wh what he does around that when he's just getting there to hit certain notes but can't, there's these sort of rougher embellishments. I feel like he's really working with his range really well. And the, the tracks are fantastic. There's some really cool like enchanting instrumentals on there that feel very very fantasy which is something I'm a sucker for so yeah it came out on 20 bucks spin this year I'm sorry it came out on Dark Descent this year and uh, I was probably thinking 20 bucks spin because Dark Descent you know doesn't do too many traditional Doom bands or anything this might be the only one but Dark Descent Records 2019 fucking really good last of the CDs but not least of them Sentence Fragments, what's up? Sect, Blood of the Beasts. Southern Lord, 2019. Um, HM2 Core, you know, stuff like uh, Trap Them and Nails and Black Breath, you know, none of those bands really sound the same, but this kind of general idea of dudes that come from the hardcore scene, um, kind of showing their love for some grind and death metal, particularly Entombed. Uh, a lot of that just hasn't hit me. You know, it just doesn't really resonate with me that much. Uh, like a song here or there, I've, I've sat down and listened to Nails and enjoyed it. Um, uh, not so much Black Breath. I've never really given Trap Them enough of a shot. I really should, actually, because I know they're one of the first and one of the best at doing that stuff, and it's got a guy from December Wolves in it who are a um, wonderful, wonderful band. Um, the thing with Sect is... The guitar tone is there, but I feel like the music is doing something kind of different than a lot of the stuff that I just mentioned. It's almost more straightforward hardcore, um, and there's an energy behind it that's of like greater and more intense than bands half their age. It's a hardcore supergroup. Chris Callahan on vocals from some of my favorite bands from the 90s and 2000s: Left for Dead, The Swarm, Ruination, you know, uh, Ontario, Canada, Legend. Um, from the hometown, Scott Kraus, who was the guitarist in Earth Crisis, doing a style that's almost a complete 180 away from all that kind of slower, heavier stuff that Earth Crisis did. And then there's some guys from Day of Suffering, I think, involved, and I want to say the drummer was in Catharsis at one point or another. And it's, uh, it's just manic, um, heavily distorted, noisy, abrasive, hardcore, with just that guitar tone and some of the best lyrics. I've read in a while. Um, Chris Callahan's always been one of my favorite lyricists. A lot of stuff pertaining to the world at large as it is, and uh, just the desperation with facing it. It's a really good record. I like everything they've done so far. A uh, couple of vinyl LPs for you, a couple of winnels. We got Enforced at the Walls. So um, I've been psyched on this band. I got their 2017 demo a few years ago. And I've been eagerly awaiting this. Um, this came out a while ago. I ordered it with a pre-order of some stuff from Radio Rahim, so I waited patiently for a little while to this, for this to arrive. Well, I waited for those to be released. 
I'll talk about those on another update. But this comes on a smoky clear, it's very pretty. So Enforced are kind of in that realm of modern crossover, more in the way of, um, you know, Power Trip, uh, Foreseen, Red Death, that kind of stuff. Dudes that maybe have more of a hardcore background doing their take on thrash metal. And usually what that equates to is uh, very strong, breakdown-minded kind of thrash metal stuff. Good knowledge of how to build up a song and execute the slower parts to get your juices flowing. And it's very good with um, Power Trip kind of being in between records right now and also have kind of slowed it down to a moshier pace, I feel like, on their last, last one a little bit. Um, foreseen kind of a wall right now. I don't know what they're doing. Kind of same thing with Red Death. This is a release of this style for this year to, to keep us sated with that kind of thrash metal stuff, that kind of crossover stuff, and it's very, very fucking good. Um, has a certain manic quality to it that brings to mind the more brutal side of thrash, you know, all that kind of exhorter and demolition hammer stuff. Um, has the nods to the NYHC kind of crossover metal-y stuff like Leeway and, and the second Chromags record, which I feel is a, a strong, consistent kind of influence on this uh, particular style of band. But they're doing their own thing. I definitely would say that if you like Foreseen and uh, the earlier Power Trip stuff, you won't be disappointed by this. It's kind of in the same wheelhouse. Uh, Dwid from Integrity does guest vocals on one song, which is cool. Um, I would say there's a bit of an integrity influence on here too as well. I don't think it's just because Dwid guessed it on it, but this came out on uh, War Records this year. And finally, we've got Never Ending Game, Just Another Day. This was a, a gift from the wife, which is awesome. She picked up the uh, Mind Force LP for herself and decided to snag this for me, which is great. I talked about this band's demo at length and their other promo tape. Uh, this band is hardest of the hard right now. Um, you know, if you like kind of gritty, metallic, kind of, you know, rhythmic, maybe slightly rappy a little bit, but in the 90s way of um, Cold as Life, Neglect, the first Blood for Blood LP, etc. This is right up your alley. Um, another quick one, 23 minutes and it's over. You know, about 10 songs on it. Uh, very fucking hard shit. They're from Detroit. Um, kind of a goofy thing to note, but when I saw them live, I noticed they had the metal guitarist. I feel like a lot of bands in the 90s and early 2000s would be mostly clean-cut looking dudes, hardcore bands I'm talking about, and then they'd have the one shredder with the long hair, and this <laughs> this band keeps up that tradition. It's a dude in like a DSI cutoff shirt, long hair, and you could tell there's a little bit, just enough of like extreme metal influence on this that really makes it some good like pummeling double bass and like tasty lead work that I, I think really brings uh, something new or newer to the table or at least honors older bands like One Step Up which is a band I just discovered from Baltimore that I'd heard of but apparently were a big influence on these guys who had a, a pretty strong kind of death and thrash metal influence in with their for lack of a better term kind of tough guy hardcore or whatever but yeah I mean this this shit this shit straight up smokes um, came, came out on Triple B came out on this blue splatter there um highly recommended if this is your wheelhouse at all if you like anything from like sheer terror to biohazard anything along those lines the east coast assault comps bulldoze i mean this is the beginning of what would eventually kind of evolve into what's known as beatdown now um but this is a lot more i don't know sincere to me and honest a lot of personal lyrics super gruff um kind of hollow but really mean sounding sort of vocals reminds me a lot of the singer from neglect so yeah i can't sing the praises of these dudes enough never ending game from detroit on triple b and that's about it i uh, my tongue feels weird i've been talking too much hopefully that clears itself up you guys uh you guys have a good one later